Cooler Master's Hyper 212 Evo and LED are some of the most popular CPU coolers of all time, but are they still relevant in 2020? Howdy howdy guys, Ponchato here, and today we're gonna to be comparing the Hyper 212 Evo and Hyper 212 LED, and seeing if either or both are still worth it today. So Cooler Master's been selling these four heat pipe tower coolers for a while. Quite a while, in fact. The 212 LED is pretty old. It was released back in 2016, but the Evo is downright ancient. It was released in late 2011. The series started with the original Hyper 212, which was released in September of 2007. So the Hyper 212 name has been around for quite a while, and it's always kept a budget price of around 30 to 35 US dollars. The Evo and LED have gone through minor revisions since their release, most notably the addition of AM4 support, but they also support LGA 2011 and 2066. And quick note on the LED, I got this 212 LED pre-AM4 revision, so it can only be mounted with the AMD spring clamp system, which is how I'll be testing it today. The updated 212 LED can be mounted vertically with air flowing front to back rather than top to bottom like this one. Cooler Master rates both coolers for 150 watt TDP and both have nearly identical dimensions. The Evo and LED are both 120 millimeters wide. The Evo is slightly shorter at 159 millimeters against the LED's 160. And it's also slightly thinner at 77 millimeters deep compared to the LED's 84. In fact, the biggest difference between the two is in the fan. The Evo maxes out at 2000 RPM and has a sleeve bearing, whereas the LED tops out at 1600 and has a slightly better rifle bearing. Oh, and the LED has, as you'd expect, red LEDs in the fan. Both coolers also come with a second set of fan clips if you want to do a push-pull setup. Given their nearly identical specs, RAM clearance is essentially the same for both. The fan just barely hangs over the first RAM slot, so if your motherboard only has two RAM slots, you'll be limited to about 45 millimeter tall memory. With a 212 LED mounted sideways like this, the RAM clearance is limited to about 37 millimeters. Both coolers have nearly identical heat sinks with four direct contact heat pipes, each six millimeters in diameter and an aluminum fin stack. Both coolers use the same fan mounts, which are simple plastic brackets that grab onto either side of the heatsink. This style of fan mount is actually very nice. It's super easy to mount and remove the fans, unlike most other coolers with that bent paperclip design that we see today. Going into more detail on the fans, other than the Evo running up to 400 RPM faster than the LED, the other big difference is in the bearing. The Evo's sleeve bearing is the most basic type of bearing. It's the loudest, it has the lowest lifespan, and it's generally considered to be the lowest quality bearing that you can have in a fan. The LEDs isn't much better, but it is an improvement. Rifle bearings have rifling on the liner, which helps distribute oil or the lubricant throughout the entire length of the bearing, meaning they generally run quieter and last longer, regardless of mounting orientation. Back to the similarities between the Evo and LED, both have rubber pads on the fan mounting brackets to help decouple the fans from the heatsink, which helps reduce noise by allowing less fan vibration to transfer to your case. So installation of the Hyper 212 Evo is not the best I've dealt with. Actually, it shows its age pretty obviously. The first step is getting the back plate mounted to the motherboard, which is less than convenient. You need to take the mounting nuts that go on top of the motherboard and put plastic spacers on them. Next, you need to line up the back plate with the motherboard mounting holes, hold it in place, and slide the mounting nuts through the keyed holes in the back plate. With those in and holding it all together, you then thread bottom nuts on to hold the back plate and top mounting nuts in place. Then you tighten those down with the included Phillips head adapter. That part of the install is pretty bad. Most recent coolers don't even use an aftermarket back plate, but rather they use the stock one included with AM4 motherboards. Anyway, once the back plate is on, it's pretty easy. You add a dab of the included thermal paste, set the heat sink down on the processor, then position the cross arm over the base of the cooler. This mounting bar is a little wonky too, but it is a little bit easier if you figure out what position lines up with the mounting holes before you actually put the heatsink down, and then you can fit the bar in and line it up much more easily. Once it's in position, you just tighten it down, clip on the fan, and plug it in. These fan clips are actually the easiest part, and I definitely like them better than the bent paperclip mounts that most coolers use today. But other than that, the installation is pretty bad by current standards. Mounting the 212 LED, on the other hand, is pretty straightforward if you use the spring clamp like so. You put thermal paste on the processor, put the heatsink down, then put the spring clamp through the heatsink and hook it on both sides. 
clip the fan on, plug it in, and it's done. That one is actually a very painless process. As I mentioned before, the latest revision to the Hyper 212 LED includes both this mounting system and one similar to the Evos, which allows for mounting with front to back airflow rather than bottom to top like this. And now let's go to the benchmark, starting with idle temperatures. Owing to their relatively high minimum RPM of 600, both the Evo and LED keep my Ryzen 7 1700 at 5.2 and 6 degrees above ambient, respectively. That high RPM, however, does lead to lackluster idle noise levels. The LED runs at 29.6 decibels, which is audible but not bad, but the Evo runs at a little over 32 decibels. That's not loud by any means, but it is much more noticeable than you'd hope from an aftermarket cooler. This is probably mostly due to the fan bearing on the Evo. Sleeve bearings simply don't work as well to keep things running smooth and quiet. Now here are the load temperatures with the coolers running at their maximum RPM. At 46 and 47 Celsius above ambient, these coolers are certainly better than a stock cooler, but fall behind many other aftermarket coolers. Granted, most of these that I've benched on this setup are two to three times more expensive, but it's worth bearing in mind that the Hyper 212 Evo and LED are just not that strong of coolers. Then again, these low deltas aren't that bad in absolute terms. They correspond to actual CPU temperatures of about 71 or 72 degrees, so well within safe operating range with room to spare. And now we'll take a look at load noise levels. Despite only being about one degree warmer than the Evo, the 212 LED is more than six decibels quieter. That is a pretty significant difference in noise. Another thing to note on the Evo is it is the loudest cooler I've used on this test setup so far. Finally, here are the load temperatures normalized to 40 decibels. This graph shows what I think is the best metric for comparing coolers on an even playing field, CPU temperature of each one at a constant noise level. It also shows a pretty dramatic distinction between high-end coolers and the low-end. The Evo and LED both hit at the bottom of the list at 50.2 and 50.6 degrees respectively. That's a significant step up from a stock cooler, but still, not super great. So there's what the Hyper 212 looks like. To answer the original question, are the 212 Evo and 212 LED still relevant and still worth it in 2020? Given they're the same price and otherwise very similar in performance, I wouldn't recommend the Evo, but the Hyper 212 LED does still get a mild recommendation for pretty much one specific situation. If you're replacing a stock cooler and if you absolutely don't want to spend more than 40 bucks. That's the one big advantage these coolers have today is that they're still pretty cheap and actually getting cheaper relative to the market. Most new coolers from most manufacturers are creeping up toward the $50 to $60 range, whereas these are still $35 or less, typically. That's a pretty inexpensive upgrade to make for a very sizable step up from stock coolers, especially if you're using an Intel system, because we all know Intel stock coolers are hot trash. So if you need to escape from a stock CPU cooler, Cooler Master's Hyper 212 LED is a viable and very cheap option. Links to pick up either one are in the description below. Hit subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified of new videos as soon as they're up. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe, and I want to hear from you. Are you running a Hyper 212 or one of its variants, or have you run one in the past? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I hope I helped, and I'll see you in the next video. You might have noticed that I switched the position of all of this stuff earlier in the video because it kept wobbling, and at one point it actually fell over and made a very loud noise, and it scared me, so I moved it. That's your behind the scenes look for today.